Next matchup, Indians, Twins, 8-10 Minnesota. The Indians are minus 120, totals 9.5. We did see a 10-cent move toward Cleveland in the early wagering here. We also saw a little bit of movement upward on the total. The Indians open a buck 30, up to 140, total open 9, up to 9.5. Right now the Twins are plus 130 on the money line. We have Shane Bieber for the Indians, Devin Smeltzer for the Twins. Bieber's 11-4 with a 3-3-1 ERA and a 0.98 whip. He also has 182 strikeouts and just 149 innings pitched. The Indians are 31-22 and 22 away from home this year. They have a 648 win percentage as the favorite. They're also winning 62% of their games at the current market price. Cleveland's also 16-7 and seven when Bieber makes the start. They're winning 65% of their games as the official road favorite. They're also 18-12, and 12, taking on teams over 540. Uh, Minnesota on the other side, they're winning 35% of their games, taking on teams allowing 3.9 to 4.2 runs per contest. They've also dropped seven out of their last 14 at the current market price. Now, total-wise, Cleveland is 18-5 and five to the under when Bieber makes the start. I'm going to lean Cleveland Indians, minus 140 in the under. Nine and a half runs in that game. Next matchup, Rangers, Brewers, 8-10 Milwaukee. The Brewers are minus 180, totals at 10. The Rangers are plus 170 on the money line. We have Colby Allard for the Rangers. Uh, Gio Gonzalez for the Brewers. Gonzalez is 2-1 on the year, 3-3-5 ERA, 1.18 whip. He also has 40 Ks in 45 innings pitched. Colby Allard, uh, Allard on the other side, he was acquired from Atlanta. Uh, he went 1-1 one one, uh, with the Braves last year with a 12.38 ERA. So uh, this could be a rough one for him uh, in Milwaukee. Now, uh, Texas is 16 and a half games back in the AL West. Uh, they're also seven games back in that second wildcard spot. So uh, you might, I don't know, if they continue this trend, you may have to stick a fork in them. Uh, they've won just 23 out of 57 on the road. And when it comes to the Brewers on the other side, they're right in the mix. They're right in the hunt. They're uh, uh, half a game ahead for that second wild card spot. So if the season ended today, they would be in the tournament. They're also just three and a half games back of first place in the NL Central. Uh, pretty good at home this year for the Brewers, 33 and 24 at home. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean Milwaukee minus one and a half in the over 10 runs in that game. Next matchup, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, 815 New Bush Stadium. The Cardinals are minus 140, totals at 9. Not a whole lot of movement on the money line in the early wagering. Pretty good two-way action there. We did see a little bit of movement downward on the total. The cards open and remain minus 140. Total open 9.5, down to 9 flat. Right now the Pirates are plus 130 on the money line. We have Chris Archer for the Pirates, Dakota Hudson for the cards. Hudson's 10-6 and six with a 3.99 ERA and 93 strikeouts. Chris Archer on the other side, just 3-8 and eight on the year for the Pirates, 535. ERA, 1.42 whip. Pittsburgh is last in the AL Central. Uh, they are now 18 games under 500. What the hell happened to them? They're just 48 and 66 overall for the year, 421 win percentage. They've also dropped eight out of their last 10 ball games. Um, one more thing to add about Pittsburgh, they won just 24 out of 58 when traveling. Now the Cards, they are half a game back for that second wild card spot, so Cards right in the mix there as well, staying afloat. They're 31 and 23 at home this year, 21 and 8 at the current market price. And when it comes to the total, the Pittsburgh Pirates are 13 and 7 to the over when Archer makes the start. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean St. Louis minus 140 in the over nine runs in that game. Next matchup, Diamondbacks, Dodgers, 10-10, Los Angeles. The Dodgers are minus 190, total 7.5. We did see a 10-cent fade of L.A. in the early wagering. We also saw movement downward on the total. The Dodgers open $2, down to minus 190. Total open 8, down to 7.5. Right now, the D-backs are plus 175 on the money line. We have Robbie Ray for the Diamondbacks, Walker Bueller for the Dodgers. Bueller's 10-2 with a 3-2-2 ERA and a 1.00 whip. Bueller also has 152 strikeouts and just 131 innings pitched. Now, Robbie Ray on the other side for Arizona, 403 ERA, 1.30 whip. 
Uh, the Dodgers are 18 games back of, I'm sorry, the Diamondbacks are 18 games back of these very Dodgers. They're also winning just 16% of their games at the current market price. They've won just four out of 12 taking on the Dodgers this year. And speaking of Los Angeles, they are the best team in Major League Baseball right now. 77 and 40 overall for the year, 658 win percentage, eight and two in their last 10. Now total wise, the Dodgers are eight and four to the over in their last dozen taking on Arizona. Arizona. Give me the Dodgers minus one and a half and the over seven and a half runs in that game. Next matchup, Rays, Mariners, 10-10 Seattle. The Rays are minus 135, totals nine and a half. Seattle's plus 125 on the money line at home. Jalen Beeks for the Rays, Marco Gonzalez for the Mariners. Gonzalez is uh, coming into this game with a 4-3-2 ERA and a 1.33 whip. Jalen Beeks on the other side for the Rays, 5-1 on the year, 3-7-7 ERA. Seattle is last in the AL West, uh, 20 games under 500, at just 48 and 68 overall for the year. They've also won just 27 out of 60 ball games at home. Uh, the Rays on the other side, half a game ahead for that second wild card spot in the American League. The season ended today, they would be in. They're also 16 games over 500 at 66 and 50 overall for the year. They're also 7 and 3 in their last 10. I'm going to lean Tampa Bay minus 135 in the over nine and a half runs in that game. Next matchup, Rockies, Padres, 10-10 San Diego. The Padres are minus 140 totals at nine. No movement on the, the money line as of yet. Pretty good two-way action there. We did see movement downward on the total. Once again, the Padres open and remain minus 140. Total open nine and a half down to nine flat. Uh, Colorado's plus 130 on the money line. We have Kyle Freeland for the Rockies. We have Cal Quantrill for the Padres in this one. Now, Freeland has 67 strikeouts and 82 innings pitch for the Rockies. Uh, he did give up just uh, two, or, two runs in five innings pitched in his last start taking on uh, the San Francisco Giants. Now, the Padres are just four and six taking on the Rockies this year. They're also 19 and 32 taking on teams under 460. Now, total-wise, the Rockies are eight and two to the over taking on the Padres. I'm gonna lean Colorado plus one and a half in the over nine runs in that game. And then we're gonna slide into our next and final game for the show. It is gonna be Phillies, Giants, 10-15 San Francisco. The Phillies are minus 120, totals eight and a half. We did see a 10 cent move toward Philadelphia and movement downward on the total. The Phillies open a buck 10, up to 120. Total open nine, down to eight and a half. We have Dylan Smiley for the Phils, Tyler Bead for the Giants. Now the Phils are eight games back in the NL East. They're really struggling right now, and they're actually tied for third with the New York Mets uh, after holding that second place spot for most of the year. Uh, the Phils have won just 25 out of 55 on the road this year. They've also dropped six out of their last 10 ball games. Now, total wise, the Giants are three and one to the under taking on the Phils this year. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean San Francisco plus $1.10 in the under eight and a half runs in that game. And before we go ahead and cut out, guys, we're just going to do a quick recap of the picks. We have Oakland minus 175 and the under 10 and a half. We have Houston minus one and a half and the under 10 and a half. We have the Yankees minus 155 and the over 10 and a half. We have the Braves minus 145 and the under eight runs. We have the Nationals minus a buck and a quarter and the over eight runs. We have the Angels plus one and a half and the under 11 and a half. We have the Royals minus 105 and the under nine and a half. We have the Reds plus 105 and the under nine runs. We have the Indians minus 140 and the under nine and a half. We have the Brewers minus one and a half and the over 10 runs. We have the Cardinals minus 140 and the over nine runs. We have the Dodgers minus one and a half and the over seven and a half in that game. We also have Tampa Bay minus 135 and the over nine and a half. We also have the Rockies plus one and a half and the over nine runs. And last but not least, we have the Giants plus 110 and the under eight and a half in that ball game there. 
All right, guys, that is going to do it for me. Once again, happy Friday to you. The weekend is almost here. Well, it basically is here, so I'm very excited for that. We're going to cut out of the office in a couple of hours here. Uh, but I got to remind you guys, don't forget to check me out on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page. Once again, we're 32 and 18 in our last 50 premium plays on that website. We have a ton of different memberships and packages you can subscribe to, and they begin at just $1.99 per month. Check me out, patreon.com slash Slash Brock page link is in the description section below but most importantly I got to thank you for watching this program right here on YouTube I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content all this great free information uh, great free information and as always don't forget to check me out on patreon.com slash Brock page